Knock, knock, knock. Hi, my name is Sam. I'm going to be your student nurse today. Today we're going to be doing a musculoskeletal assessment, neurological assessment, as well as a GI assessment. Can you tell me your name and date of birth? Yes, Katie Wyman, 11 96 Okay, and can you tell me where we are? We are at the doctor's office. And can you tell me what day of the week it is? It is Thursday. Okay, so I noticed my patient has learned and oriented times three. As I look at her general appearance, she seems to be relaxed and her posture is upright. Her hygiene seems to be okay. I don't smell any odor. She's dressed appropriately for the weather and um, she doesn't seem to be any distress as well as her breathing is effortless. So we're gonna go ahead and start the GI assessment, but I'm gonna ask you a few questions before. Um, do you have any family history of colon cancer? No. Um, do you have um, any problems with your vision or ability to walk? Nope. No, okay. And do you have any um, past um, injuries that would include you hurting your head in any way? Nope. Okay. All right, so I'm gonna go ahead and start the GI assessment. If you don't mind, I could have you lay down real quick. And then I'm gonna pull your shirt up a little bit. So as I look at her general, like the general um, inspection of her stomach, The skin tone is bilaterally symmetrical. I don't notice any tattoos or piercings. I don't see any pulsations. Um, I don't see any striae, lesions, tubing, or drainage, um, or any bandages. And um, I'm going to ask you, when was your last bowel movement? Um, it was last night. Okay. So I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to start um, by listening to her left upper quadrant of her abdomen. Left lower quadrant. So as I'm listening to her bowels, I notice that I hear probably about 15 to 20 um, noises throughout each quadrant. If there was absence of noises for a long period of time, I would listen to each quadrant for five minutes. Um, so now I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to do some um, palpating. So I'm going to start with light palpations. Let me know if you experience any tenderness. Did you experience any tenderness with that? Nope. Okay, I'm gonna go ahead and do deep palpations. Did you experience any pain with that? Nope. Okay, um, as we look at the contour, it is flat and bilaterally symmetrical. She said she wasn't experiencing any pain. Um, so I'm gonna go ahead and have you sit up now. And then now I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna start with her neurological assessment. I'm gonna have you stand up for me real quick and I'm gonna have you walk towards the wall over there and walk back to me. As I look at her gait, walking back and forth, it's smooth, balanced. Um, she's not off her balance at any way. Go ahead and go sit down. Um, she doesn't seem to be in any stress with that. So I'm gonna start the neurological assessment. Um, for the first cranial nerve I'm going to be checking is cranial nerve two. Um, so I'm going to go ahead and have you read my badge for me. Uh, Samantha Smith, BSN, Bon Secours, Memorial College of Nursing student. Okay, so her cranial nerve two is intact. I'm going to go ahead and start with cranial nerve three, four, and six. So I'm going to have you look at the... Okay. 
Okay, and then I want you to go ahead and look at the wall over there and then look at my finger. Okay, um, and now I'm going to do the caramel gauges. So I want you to follow my finger, okay? Okay, so I see Perla and all of her um, cranial nerves of three, four, and six are intact. I'm going to do cranial nerve five, which would be having her clench her jaw real quick. And then I'm going to lightly touch your face. So I want you to go ahead and close your eyes. Tell me where you feel it. Forehead. Left cheek. Right cheek. Chin. Okay. Cranial nerve five is intact. And now I'm going to go ahead and do cranial nerve seven. I'm going to have you smile for me. And then raise your eyebrows. Puff out your cheeks. And squint your eyes really hard. And I noticed that that cranial nerve is intact because she's able to do it bilaterally symmetrical with no problems. I'm going to go ahead and, well, eight actually is be able to hear. She's able to conversate with me, so I know that one's intact. And her um, quality and rate of her speech is even and effortless. Now I'm going to do nine and ten. So for nine and ten, I'm going to have you swallow real quick. Open your mouth. Stick out your tongue and say, ah. Ah. Okay. And as I look at her uvula, it is bilaterally symmetrical, um, or it's midline to her. And then now I'm going to do 11. So I'm going to have you push your shoulders up and against my resistance, go sideways. And then the other way. So cranial nerve 11 is intact. Now I'm going to do cranial nerve 12. So I'm going to have you stick out your tongue and move side to side. And cranial nerve 12 is intact as well. So now I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to start the musculoskeletal assessment. Um, can you move your head around for me in all directions? Okay. And can you move your arms up and down? And then forward and back. And then can you put your wrist out and go up and down, inside, outside, and then bend and extend. Same with your knees. I want you to be able to go ahead and flex your legs forward and then back and then your toes. Go ahead and down, back. Okay, so it was bilaterally symmetrical. Um, she was able to have full range of motion, five out of five. Now I'm going to have her do some resistance against it. So if you don't mind, go ahead and shrug your shoulders. I want you to put your arms out in front of you and then go up and down. And then I want you to bend your arms, pull towards you, and then towards me. Good. Go ahead and put your hands out, up and down. And can you go like this and touch all fingers? Okay. And then go ahead and push towards my hands and then back and then feet up and down. Good. Can't turn the camera, just move it. Uh oh. Um, go ahead and go up and down. She has full resistance, so that's five out of five. Is there anything else you need? No, nope. I'm okay. good, thank you. So that's done for my assessment. I'm pulling up my, um, my diagnostic readings. Okay, so as I'm looking at the labs, it says you are caring for a patient who has been admitted to a hospital, 33116, who complains of intermittent upper right quadrant pain times or for three days. Um, her lab values, I see that her bilirubin is elevated, um, help, her albumin is within normal limits, and the um, ammonia is also elevated. So reading those, um, I think it's appropriate to order the ERCP because her pain is located in the upper right quadrant where the gallbladder, um, bilaria system, and pancreas and liver are located. Um, and an elevated bilirubin level sometimes suggests that there's liver damage or um, liver disease. Um, I don't think a colonoscopy would be appropriate for this client because her um, pain is located in the upper right quadrant and this test looks um, on the left quadrants. And that's it for my assessment.